Oh, Mitch, we're really sorry. Honest. But we had to get started on a new juggling routine. And we had to find a third person. Without much luck, as it turned out. Hang on a sec. We are so stupid. It's been staring us in the face the whole time. What has? You mean Mitch. Do you think he could do it? Of course I could. Do what? Be the third member of our juggling team. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh, come on, please. Just let me try. Well, suppose I give him a go. All right, but you better go and get the clubs. They're in the cupboard in the workshop. Gotcha. Too easy. There's nothing to be frightened of. It's just an old sheik. What's going on? Lexi, someone's been playing silly jokes. Again. Ooh. Really? You want to watch yourselves, you guys. You might miss out on a trip to Melbourne. Melbourne? Melbourne. Oh, head of the Bush Telegraph. This is quicker than the speed of light. <gasps> the Victorian arts thing, oh. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Take great pleasure in inviting the Wyama Kids Circus to participate in the annual arts festival to be held at the Eastern Parklands, the city of Melbourne. Kaz, is this for real? <laughs> well, it's not April the 1st, is it? <laughs> Isn't that school week? You're such a nerd sometimes. I suppose you don't want help in your history project then. I didn't say that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Shush up. Listen to me for a minute. Now, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for the circus and uh, we get to show some very, very important people what we do up here. But the bad news is that, um, that not everyone will be able to go. What? Why not? Well, it's finances, mainly. The festival can't afford to send the whole troupe, so they've asked for a select group, um, a smaller show. So who goes? Well, that's the difficult part. We haven't made up our minds yet. Okay, friend, spill the beans. How are they going to decide who goes? Look, guys, this really has nothing to do with me. It's not my decision. Oh, come off it. Nothing goes on in that office without your BDIC or your flappy ears hearing about it. You should have videotaped the hospital. Then we could have seen Mitch's reaction. He was as white as a sheep. Maybe you two should leave Mitch alone. You know how spooked he gets when you do this kind of stuff. Oh, come on, lighten up. He's old enough to look after us. Okay, guys, what'll it be? Got any brains? Something. I don't think it's fair. I mean, some people, they've been doing their routine for, like, years. I've only been doing the chairs for three months. I'm sure Steve will take that into consideration when making his selection. And is there a price tag attached to this trip? Oh, how could you think of money at a time like this? It's a wonderful opportunity. That much, eh? Hang on a minute. You're talking about the middle of school term. Dad, I could learn more five days in Melbourne than I ever could at school. I could go to the art gallery, the museum... The zoo, <sighs> except they probably wouldn't let her out again. Oh, very witty, Dallas. Drop kick. Dad, mm -hmm. if we do go to Melbourne, do you mind if we lose Dallas there? With pleasure. Watch it, Dallas. I came in early hoping to get some schoolwork done. Instead, I came in and found this. Whoa. And you didn't see anyone? Nope, just hanging there. Who was in that case who put them up there? More likely to be one of your stupid practical jokes. We never touched them. We didn't. Kind of gives you the creeps. Ooh. Better call triple zero. I'd say Jules is finally flipping. Jules, <laughs> I've got to get started on my history. History could wait. This can't. See, the way I figure it is this. If we're going to compete with the likes of Tony and Donna, we've got to put in the extra hours. We have to train as hard as we can and as often as we can. We work hard enough as it is. So we train twice a day, three times if necessary. Jules, I'm sorry, OK, but if I don't get one decent mark, <gasps> there's no way I'm going to go to Mel. You've got kids to help you. What's the problem? We are going to be on that bus. Here we are. <sighs> Enjoy, guys. And for the hard workers. Thanks, Pablo. Hey, look. I've got what I could from the library. Someone's already done most of the research, but here's the interesting bit. We stop this stuff here? Yeah. 
After being betrayed by a local blacksmith, Harold Mad Dog Trent, as he was known, was captured along with his mate William Short Fuse Wilson. The two murderous bush rangers were hanged on June 13th, 1851. The next bit after that. Oh. Uh, Mad Dog went to the gallows vowing revenge on the community that betrayed him. This is great stuff. It's perfect. This can be a history project. The life and times of Mad Dog and Short Fuse. I wonder why they called him Short Fuse. Yeah, well, apparently it says here somewhere that apparently it was trying to blow up in a safe, but the fuse was a little too short. He left his right hand splattered around the bank. Oh, gross! How can we never heard of these guys? Hey, Big Ears, this is none of your business. Come on, let's go. I've got training. Bush Rangers. Cool. Please, Simo, I put a lot of work into that costume. Well, Jules, I don't feel good about this anymore, all right? Oh, come on, it's not gonna kill you. Can. That's it. Just move over into the spotlight. Fantastic. Oh, great. Now um, lift your arms up. It's not too tight, is it? I feel like a complete idiot. Your character's meant to be an idiot. I'm meant to look like an idiot, not feel like one. Come on, lighten up. Just remember, it's from Melbourne. Taya, help me out. Do you reckon he looks like an idiot? Um, come on, Taya, be honest. Sorry, Jules, I'm busy making a list for equipment. Oh, come on. Equipment? For Melbourne, right? Simo, where are you going? Getting changed. What? Taya, the chair's better be on that list. Simo, we've got work to do. Hi there, how was training? Might as well forget about Melbourne right now. Mmm, that good, eh? Worse. I just can't get it through to Simo. Doesn't matter what I ask for, he bungles it. Well, maybe he just needs to take things a little bit slower than you do. And in the meantime, I'm the one with egg on her face. I mean, it's not like I'm asking him to perform, like, brain surgery. <sighs> More's a pity. You could do with a good lobotomy. Oh, just shut up. All he has to do is, like, carry a couple of chairs around and get the timing right. Yeah, and put up with you bossing around all day. When I need your opinion, I'll ask for it, all right? And you have to drink out of the cart and you slob? That's enough, you two. Dallas, get a glass. Well, have either of you seen my white sheets? There seems to be one missing. Um, better get my homework done. Homework? She must be sick. Why didn't you tell me about the sheet? Mum is going to chuck a mental when she finds out. Hey, it wasn't my job, was it? Did Mitchell do? No, you didn't. Little termites has been very quiet, probably hatching some sort of revenge. Oh, no, not again. Maybe Alexi's going senile. Or maybe we've got a ghost of our own. Have you seen my plates, Benningia? Did you do this? No way! It's getting way too weird. Come on, let's get the sheet and get out of here. The sheet. It's gone. Who could have taken it? Well, maybe it's got a life of its own. Well, maybe it's got a life of its own. This is really creepy. Another chair. Another chair. Another chair, another chair for your royal fusions. Simo, you're going to have to be quicker. Look, you're just too slow. I'm going as quick as I can, Jules. Well, not quick enough. Look at me, I'm just, like, here like a dog. Well, the first chair you wanted me to run for, and the second I walked, and the third I stomped, it's exactly what you wanted. Well, you don't have to stomp at a snail's pace, do you? But, um, if I move too quick, it'll seem like I'm too eager. Whereas, with what you've requested, I'm grumpy and I don't want to get the chairs. Well, maybe you could set the chairs a little closer. So you wouldn't have to run, walk or stop a marathon every time I need one. Right? Okay, Jules. I'll set the chairs more closer for you. Okay? Good. 
How's that? Close enough for you? What do you think? Hey, it says here every year around the anniversary of Man Dog's death. Hey, you paying attention? Listen, mate, don't you start as well, all right? Jules has been in me back all day. She's driving me nuts. <sighs> Look, this is important. I've never been the one to believe in the other world, ghosts and spirits and stuff, but now I'm not so sure. Why? What have you found? Every year around the anniversary of Mad Dog and Short Fierce's death, there have been reports of strange phenomena. What phenomena? Get this. Tall figures in crude Ned Kelly type armor. Ghostly apparitions of a one-armed man. Short Fierce? The very same. Mm. Mischief-making spirits. Moving furniture around. So that stuff at the factory? Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking our ghosts or spirits or whatever they are have taken up residence. Kids, you know how famous would be if I could prove any of this? Precisely. And fame is like a magnet when it comes to money. Right, not a word of this to one way. We could make a fortune if we could prove any of this. Told you we had ourselves a ghost. Time to move. Well, where are we going? Fortune favors the brave, but come on. Sorry I'm late. I had to help our kid. Simo, are you in the least bit interested in this routine? What kind of a question is that? Because half the time you're late for training, oh, and then when you do bother to turn up, your mind, it's not on the job. Well, that's because you're nagging all the time. I beg your pardon? It's true. You've been bossing everyone around ever since you found about this mountain thing. That's because if we want to be as good as Donna or Tony, we have to work at it. Jules, we're never, ever going to be as good as them. You know that. And I'm getting really sick and tired of hearing about it. OK, fine. Why don't we just give up, forget about it? And you can go back to pumping petrol for the rest of your life. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means if you want to get somewhere, you have to work at it. All right. If that's the way you feel, fine. Maybe you'd be better off without me. Yeah, maybe I would. Fine. Fine! You all set, Bert? Yeah, nearly. Hang on. I've got my mum's video camera, two torches, a Walkman and my normal camera. Better take a couple of garbage bags too. What for? To bring the little bits home when we get chopped up by some psycho axe murderer. Don't be an idiot. I'm not scared of a little ghost, are you? No. But what if I'm right? What if it isn't a ghost? What if it's a raving lunatic taking up residence in the factory? Then we'll be up for a ward when we nail him. OK, now synchronise watches. The rendezvous at the factory at 8 o'clock. Sharp. Please don't mention that word. What word? Sharp. I mean, who does she think she is? I try, and I try to do what she wants. It's all about what she wants. What about what I want? Exactly. It should be a team effort. The tools can't have it all our own way. Tomorrow you can tell her that. Right. Now can we go? <sighs> Look, I don't know. I mean, maybe she's right. Maybe I'm just a dead weight and she'd be better off without me. <sighs> Look, Simo, I'm sorry. You know, I've, I know you've had a bad day, but I've got an assignment to finish, remember? Synchronization. Bert? Bert, is that you? I found your sheet. Oh, you dipstick, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Not scared of a little ghost, are we, Dallas? OK, 
come on, we've got stuff to do. What'd you tell your mum? That I was at your place doing homework. What happened to the lights? How should I know? I wouldn't worry. It's probably just a blown fuse or something. Yeah, well, it's the something that worries me. Will you cut that out? What? I didn't do anything. Now, what was that noise? Maybe it was a cat. Can you just get the camera working so we can get out of here? Come back and collect it tomorrow. And what if the battery goes flat or the tape runs out? No, we stay. If Simo doesn't want to be in the routine, then that's fine by me. I can find someone else. I think you're being stubborn. I am not. Look, you know Simo's the right person for the job. He's funny. He's clever. Melbourne's important to you, right? Of course it is. Then try and see it this way. How on earth are you going to get someone to take over Simo's job in three days' time? The trials are next week, remember? Oh. Me, my big mouth. We can't stay here all night. Your mum will ring my mum and we'll be in all sorts of trouble. <sighs> Let's just give it another half an hour. That was no cat. And it wasn't human either. Look. There. You see that? Yeah, it looks like armour. Just oh. like bush rangers. The one on the left. One arm. Short fuse. That's it. I'm getting out of here. Run. Mr. Simpson, working late again. Good day, Jules. Yeah, it's the old story. I always want their cars done by yesterday. If you're looking for Nigel, he's off with Kyet. They're doing a history project together. Oh, okay. Oh, can I leave a message? Oh, no, it's okay. I might see if I can check him down. See ya. Break it and get out that way. I think we should sit tight for a little bit longer. Look, we either sit here and quake in our boots or we can attack. Sit and quake's good. But what about the video camera? We can't just leave that there. We can pick it up on the way. All clear. Ah! 
I think we just found our DE emulsifying atomizers. Oh no, if we go out there, we could end up like a pile of blood and bone. About to teach him a lesson they won't forget in the hurry. You think they've had enough? Yeah, we'll just let them stew in there for a while. So gullible. It's amazing what you can do with a little imagination. <laughs> hey, hey, we knew it was a fake all along. We were scared for one minute. Of course, I mean, you guys are old enough to look after yourselves. Go on. Where are you two? Go. And if I ever catch you two picking on poor Mitch again... Hey, listen, thanks. I don't think they'll be scaring him again. We better get ourselves cleaned up. Yeah. Mess. <laughs> Man, this stuff's freezing. Get us. How long have you been there? Long enough. So, you haven't got time to train, but, oh, you've got plenty of time for your practical jokes. Nice to see where your priorities lie, Simo. Sorry, Jules, I asked him to come. No offence, Kiet, but it's not that hard to say no. That's not fair. It's true. You know, Jules, if you climb down from that little tower of yours up there, you'd realise that there are other people in this circus besides you. 